hello everyone and welcome back thank you so much for stopping by i hope you guys are doing well so my people a few days ago i posted a video where the chairman of uh, apis alan onyema lamented how other airlines want to frustrate him how they want to kick them out of business so he came out and he said that uh, he needs support from nigeria's especially nigeria government okay so i was so happy because a lot of people reacted like positively they were encouraging him you know praying for him that was so so nice but that these few people they were saying that this is a competition that uh, if other airlines are reducing their price that uh, ap should go ahead you know reduce his price as well so but this is not only all about a uh, price this is not only all about uh, reducing price there's a lot of ways that these people really want to frustrate a piece yes they really want to kick him out of business so i would love you guys to watch this particular video so this person recounts his experience the first day he traveled with a piece his different ways these people really want to frustrate a piece so let me just allow you guys to watch this particular video and i will be right back hey good evening everyone my name is jide Iyanewura. um what i want to share with you is my experience of the uh, uh of being on board uh here pc's uh, inaugural flight from gatwick to uh from gatwick airport in london to lagos uh Muritala Mohammed airport on the 30th of march uh 2024. so i'd originally planned on traveling with ba uh bought a ticket uh, which was a flexible flexible ticket uh, but i decided to sort of uh, uh, support airpiece instead uh, so i i bought an airpiece ticket and waited for the inaugural flight on the 30th of march um but I, I mean this is my boarding pass just that you're you're aware i mean you can see the is a 10 25 flat flight uh, and it was the 30th of march uh, 2024 um everything so i'm going to try and break this down into three different areas one is the pre-boarding arrangements the operate the ground operations before we boarded the second will be the actual experience on the flight and the third uh will be you know when we landed at um, uh, murtala mohammed international airport the pre-boarding operation for me felt like the airport authorities the airport operations are designed for for it to look like air peace was inefficient you know people don't normally think or know that the grounds operations are largely out of the hands of the airline operators or operations um, those are on in the hands of the uh, airport operators so um, in this case Gatwick Airport and I think they also had a third party um, baggage handling company from when I arrived at the airport at about 7 30 I noticed that there was absolutely no sign that pointed you to the direction of where Airbus was checking in none whatsoever that was wrong that was the first alarm bell Secondly, where they went and put airpiece was reused. They were they took them at the, the back of the corner somewhere. Second alarm bell. The third thing, the check-in desk that they put there. The come the belt, the belt that sort of moved the luggage from the check-in operator to the baggage handlers was not working. Now for an inaugural flight of an air operation these are things that you expect the air port operators to have worked very carefully with the air with the with the uh, with the airline to make sure it was seamless they obviously gave their assurances but obviously failed but you see as an outsider if you stood there what came to your mind was you were seeing air piece not gatwick operations the other thing also was that I realized that the number of desks that they had available for us to check in was very limited. Even worse was the fact that the staff that they had behind those desks were rookies. I think they, they probably just hired them and trained them very, very, hard, very, very quickly. 
because they were asking each other, how do I do this? How do I do, uh, uh, you know, excess luggage? How do I pay for this? How do I? And I was, I just, I just stood there. I, I tried to stand aside as an operations person myself to really take it all in and see how all of this was likely to affect the brand of Airpiece in the minds of the passengers that were trying to experience this sort of beautiful operation. Anyways, I checked in. Mine was absolutely seamless. Everything went very, very well. I then decided that I was going to have a third. So I had some hand luggage, um, some hand luggage, uh, luggage I started to check in. So I bought a small suitcase again. I put them in there and decided to have a third baggage check, which was supposed to cost $150 to check in. When I got to the earpiece desk, they said it was $150. They tagged it. They gave me uh, a ticket to go and pay at the desk of these third-party luggage operators. Uh, I think they're called uh, Swift. I can't remember the name. I think it's Swift, Swift, Swift Flight or whatever the name of the baggage handlers were. When I got there, they said uh, it was 170 pounds. And I thought, how can you, how can you translate $150 to 170 pounds? Because normally, 150 pounds is, 150 dollars is meant to be 130 something pounds because the sterling was stronger than the dollar. They charged Fariga, they said, no, that's it. Okay, so um, uh, a lady stepped forward and she introduced herself to me as, the, as an executive director of the airline. A uh, young, very vibrant lady, and she said her name was uh, Nena. She offered to pay uh, the, the, the cost, and I said, no, you don't do that. This is not about the money, it's about the principle. The principle that the, I can see this third party company trying to frustrate the efforts of Airpiece. I think it was at that point that she introduced, she told me that her name was Nena and that she, her son was Onyema. So I thought, okay. And she said, oh, that she's the daughter of, of the chairman of the Airpiece. I have to say she was very professional. She was very kind and she obviously knows her onions. When it comes to customer services and operations, she did the right thing. She did everything by the books. Um, I also met another lady called Tony Olajide. She's the chief operating officer on ground. These ladies did all that they could do. All that in textbook terms was needed to be done to make that flight leave the grounds on time. But you know what? <laughs> I, I stood there and I laughed because I saw how they had planned beforehand to, to really frustrate those efforts. Do you know that it was the night before the check-in that they communicated to, um, uh, to Airpiece that they were changing the check-in desk and they changed it from a fully operational one to one that, was, that didn't have an operational uh, conveyor belt. I mean, let's think about this. Airpiece did everything right. Their communications was bang on. They informed us three days before, two days before, on the day itself, that they were going to open the checking desk at 7.40. They were looking to close the checking desk at 9.40, and they were looking for the flight to leave and to take off on time. They did everything by the books. But let's remember that Arik had tried this route before, and they were frustrated and died. Medview had tried this route before, frustrated and died. Bellevue, frustrated and died. Do you know why they don't want this route to succeed for a Nigerian airline operator? It is very lucrative. It's a six hour flight, comparative to London, New York. London, New York economy, 350, 400 pounds. London, Lagos, the minimum you're going to get is about eight, 900 pounds. Low season. High season, I think some people were, during this um, Easter period, some people were finding B and Virgin at almost 3,000 pounds for economy delight. Premium was touching, I think premium, premium was touching about 3,005. Don't even go. Don't even go to their upper class. Six, seven thousand pounds. The same six hour flight, London to New York, will be three, four hundred pounds for, pre for, for economy, maybe about eight hundred pounds for premium, and then maybe about one thousand five, maybe two thousand pounds at the max for, for, business, for business class, maximum. 
So you can see how lucrative this route is. But the only two British airlines plowing that route from Lagos to London, British Airways and Virgin Atlantic. The British government and those two companies will do everything within their power to truncate the effort of any Nigerian airline trying to break into that, into that market. So my advice to Chief Oyema and his operations crew is that they should not see this as a business to business fight. This is a government to government fight. It's a British government establishment versus the Nigerian government establishment fight. Chief Onyema needs, in addition to the Minister of Aviation, and I'm not saying he's not doing what he's supposed to do, I'm sure he is, but he needs two other ministers behind him. He needs the Minister for Trade, Industry, Trade and Investment, and he needs the Minister for Foreign Affairs besides him. The trade part of the business, the minister needs to let the British know what the consequences will be if they continue to do what they're doing. For the foreign side of it, the airline business is not just about the trade. It's also a diplomatic business as well. There's a very strong element of diplomacy in airline operations. When you talk about the BASA agreements and all those, and those are foreign related, uh, you know, foreign affairs related discussions. So these two ministers together with the Minister for Aviation hold the key to unlocking, to unlocking access to the UK airspace for Nigerian operators. They have to stand behind Alex Onyema. They have to stand beside airpiece to make this work. Again, as I said, everybody on the plane, there was a guy, the captain, Chief uh, uh, Captain Lawrence um, uh, Tochuku, he walked the length and the breadth of the, of the plane, did fantastically well, spoke to everybody. You know, it was, it felt, it felt like home. I really, I really like the fact that the entire crew was all Nigerian. Um, you know, the co-pilot was a, a guy called David Olateru. They spoke pigeon in peace. It was beautiful. There was a bit of turbulence on the, on the, on the route. These guys handled it brilliantly, effortlessly. Take off, landing, beautiful. So we have to help AP succeed and not see them go the same route, the same way as uh, Arik or, uh, or um, uh, Bellevue and, and, Med, uh, and Medway, the Medview. These the AP has to succeed. The Nigerians in diaspora, particularly the Nigerians in the UK, we have a role to play. If you have to write to your MPs, write to them. Let them know that there are discriminatory practices at Gatwick Airport. Point to the fact that they are deliberate, they are intentional in their effort to see and bring down a Nigerian airline operator at Gatwick. If you don't do it, British Airways and, and Virgin will bring the prices down for a while. So as to get rid of, 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 of Airpiece. And once Airpiece is gone, they go back. This time, charge you maybe triple. And all those Ilaya and Easter periods trips that you would normally make, you can't make them anymore. So literally, it's in our own interest to make sure that we see air peace succeed. Please, let's do that. Let's stand behind one of ours. Now, talking about my experience on the plane, um, I can only describe it as awesome. I mean, the food was, <laughs> the food was absolutely beautiful. Um, I had... Um, uh, real goat meat pepper soup as starters and when I did talk about starters uh, it, the portions were good man you know very very tasty big chunky meats and stuff uh, would be say the, the goat meat itself they, 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 they challenge you say make you okay, get stuck in not like the ones you get on the British Airways and Virgin flights trust me you know well good rounded portions um, you had a choice of jollof fries with chicken. We had, um, you know, um, and then before we landed, there was there was uh, uh, skewered uh, prawns, and it was just beautiful, just really lovely. Um, the flight was the plane itself was very clean. Um, it was very bright, very spacious, and and you know, really really good and decent size in terms of the space, the seats. Um, the experience was excellent. The hosts and hostesses were perfect. Uh, they attended to ev every single one of your needs. 
Um, do you know sometimes you press to request assistance, you press the, uh, the, the um, uh, assistance button on a BA or Virgin flight. It take them sometimes five minutes to even get to you. Uh, these guys were very prompt. So the only thing I can ask them to do is please maintain that level of service. I would give them an eight over 10 in terms of service. Really, really first class. They did very, very well. Well done. So my people, that is it. I hope you guys had everything this man said here. I hope you had how British airline operators want to frustrate this man in the inauguration day for the flight from UK to Nigeria. So this is what I was saying that it's not all about reducing price. Like these people really want to use different ways to frustrate this man to, to kick him out of business. So it is high time, like he said it here, that it's high time for Nigeria government to stand up and say enough is enough. Because according to him, this is kind of a war between UK government and Nigeria government. Because if eventually Nigeria government allowed this to happen, that Nigerians go here, Ramu. Because APC is kind of open door for another airline from Nigeria to succeed. It's high time for Nigerians to support this man as well as Nigeria government. So my people, I would love you guys to leave your thoughts in the comment section. What do you think about what he said here? And also, if today is your first time, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more updates. Like this video, share it as well. And thank you everyone that be sharing my video. I truly, truly appreciate you. May Almighty God bless you all. Yeah, I'll see you guys in my next one. Goodbye for now.